Right now on News 3 this morning, Sunday, the calm before the storm. A winter storm warning is in effect for parts of our viewing area. Snow was headed our way and it could wreak havoc on the roads for drivers returning from Thanksgiving. And breaking overnight from the Diocese of Madison, Bishop Robert Morlino has died. How worshipers have been honoring him all night. And the Packers will take the field for the first time in more than a week tonight. What to expect as they take on the Vikings in Minnesota. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday. Good Sunday morning and thanks for joining us for News 3 This Morning Sunday. It is 630 on this November 25th. I'm Josh Breider with meteorologist Chris Reese, who is extra busy tracking a little winter storm. And some of us are going to see snow. Some of us aren't. That's right. If you live here in Madison, I'm... I'm not convinced we'll even see a flake of snow falling today, but as you work your way south towards Janesville, that's where things could get very heavy very quickly as we go through the afternoon. We do have winter storm warnings in effect for part of our area right now. That includes Monroe and Janesville as well. As you work your way over towards Jefferson County, you have winter weather advisories and then winter storm warnings again towards Milwaukee. But of course, this favors the south and eastern tier of the state and just checking in with the weather service, they actually held off on issuing a blizzard warning for those areas. However, they are considering doing so just because the wind will be a big deal. So you see those blizzard warnings in southern Iowa right now. That's what's in the orange as this system works its way towards the north and east. Don't be surprised if those blizzard warnings get expanded to northern Illinois and extreme southeastern Wisconsin. This is a big deal storm, just not for us here in Madison, but for those folks getting hit by it. It certainly is a big one. We're watching that right now. You can see some light rain and snow moving into northern Illinois as we speak. Here's the storm occurring across parts of Nebraska and Kansas, getting ready to take that turn as it works its way towards the north um, tier of Indiana there. So we're going to be watching that all day. In the meantime, enjoy the quiet weather that we have here in town. 33 degrees right now, and of course, we'll pay attention to what happens this afternoon. Crazy how much of a fine line there's going to be. It is a very fine line. This is going to be the difference of two miles down the road, nearly a foot of snow, one mile up the road, and nothing. Wow. It is a very sharp cutoff. All right, well, we'll check with you in here just a little bit. All right. Ahead of that potential snow, a snow emergency is in effect for the city of Beloit. This means all cars must be removed from the city streets by 11 o'clock this morning and stay off until at least 11 tomorrow morning. If you're wondering where to park during that time, there's a list of parking areas on the city of Beloit's website. We have a link to that website on ours as well. As always, if your plans depend on the weather, make sure to get our Channel 3000 First Alert weather and traffic app. There you will find updated and accurate information. And now to that breaking news from the Diocese of Madison. Bishop Robert Morlino has died. He passed away around 915 last night at St. Mary's Hospital shortly after suffering a cardiac arrest. This is according to a post from the Diocese of Madison's Facebook page. A previous post said the bishop suffered a cardiac event during a routine doctor's appointment Wednesday. He was initially expected to be okay, but his condition worsened. Funeral plans will be announced at a later time. Morlino was 71 years old. Right now, an all-night prayer vigil is being held at Holy Name Heights on High Point Road. The vigil will end when mass begins at 8 o'clock this morning. The public is invited to attend. Flags are flying at half staff across the state this weekend. Governor Walker made the order after a local airman's remains were found this fall. The governor's executive order says private first class Joseph Natvik was flying a cargo plane during World War II when it went down in a remote area of India. His remains were just recovered and identified this September. This morning he will be buried with full military honors in Columbus. This morning Madison police are looking for a missing 15 year old girl. Bintna Jama was reported missing on Tuesday after leaving West High School early. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. Anyone with information is asked to call the Madison Police Department. One third of U.S. parents plan to skip out on getting the flu shots for their kids this season. That's according to a new study by a Children's Hospital in Michigan this week. In the poll, the top three reasons parents cited for not getting their children vaccinated. They were concerned about side effects. It doesn't work very well and their currently healthy child does not need to be vaccinated. But medical experts disagree. Dr. Janina Smith is an infectious disease specialist with UW Health and a mother herself. I get my children the flu vaccine because I believe it will protect them um, because I never want to see them suffer complications of the flu. Uh, I don't want them to suffer 
And I wouldn't do that if I didn't really believe it, and I wouldn't do it for my patients either. In Wisconsin, 379 people died last season from flu-related flu related symptoms, including three children. Health officials say more than 7,500 were hospitalized. Right now, doctors tell me it's still too early to tell what this flu season will be like. If your weekend plans include heading to a farm to cut down your Christmas tree, the state's Farm Bureau is asking you to stay in state. Wisconsin is home to $16 million Christmas tree industry. There are more than 365 Christmas tree farms across the state. Along with adding that seasonal smell to your home, those trees are often recycled into mulch after the holidays. We are fifth in the country when it comes to the number of Christmas trees cut and tree acreage. Speaking of trees, the executive tree up at the governor's mansion this year will honor the servicemen and women who have served our country and will spend this holiday season overseas. You're looking at footage from the residents a couple of years ago. Wisconsin National Guard members helped decorate this year's tree. The ornaments were made by a woman who lost her son in Iraq. They feature dream catchers, each with a dog tag and gold star, representing a fallen soldier from the Badger State. When the tree comes down, those ornaments will be sent to families of someone who died while serving. The tree will officially be lit this afternoon before an open house. If you didn't get your shopping fix on Black Friday or Small Business Saturday, maybe getting ready for tomorrow's Cyber Monday deals. According to a survey by staffing firm Robert Half Technology, nearly two-thirds of professionals say they plan to shop online at work this holiday season. Three out of ten people say they'll search retailers several times a week. You want to make sure that you're not just going to random websites to purchase off of an email you might receive. One thing to keep in mind as you fill your online shopping cart, one out of three employers say they monitor the site's employees visit. If you do order gifts online, Madison police are reminding you about porch pirates this time of year. They encourage you to get your packages sent to your workplace instead of your home. There are also options to schedule deliveries for a time you know you'll be at home or require a signature. 81 million Americans shopped online last Cyber Monday and nearly a third of Americans say they've had a package stolen from their front door. This is one of the busiest travel weekends on the roads and once all the numbers come in, holiday travel is expected to be up more than 5% from last year. Today is the expected to be the official busiest travel day of the year. That's when United will operate a record 679 flights out of Chicago, enough to fly 71,000 people home. As many as 3 million flyers could pass through TSA checkpoints, which would also be a record. There's a reminder out this morning that anyone impacted by the summer's historic flooding can register for relief through FEMA until December 17th. That agency has already come through and assessed overall damage, but that process was just to qualify certain counties for assistance. Homeowners and businesses still need to register to be considered. You can do that online at disasterassistance.gov or over the phone. The number is right there on your screen. People who live and work in Juneau County can still go to the Disaster Recovery Center. FEMA has set up in Mostyn tomorrow. Federal representatives as well as people with the U.S. Small Business Administration and Wisconsin Emergency Management will be there to answer questions about assistance programs. Wisconsin football team lost to Minnesota Saturday and for the first time since 2003, the Gophers took Paul Bunyan's axe across the state line. The last game of the regular season was also a busy one for University Police. A total of 25 citations were issued during the game. 24 people were arrested while 61 people were ejected. That includes 15 UW students. 15 underage alcohol tickets were given out and seven people were taken to the detox center. Saturday's game was also the last home game for longtime band director Mike LaCrone. LaCrone has been leading the Badger Band for 50 seasons and will retire at the end of this year. He was understandably emotional heading into the final game. I don't know how I feel right now. As I said, I've, I've been pumped up by the fact that I've, we had a great rehearsal this morning. Uh, the band seems ready. Uh, we've got a great game to go to this afternoon. The alumni are here, so you get that exhilaration. But I can sense in the background that uh, the time is coming up fast. LaCrone was honored at a special performance on the UW campus before yesterday's game. 
The Packers are back on the field tonight for the first time in more than a week. They'll be playing in prime time against the Vikings. The Packers are still looking for their first win on the road this season. The last time these rivals met up back in September, they tied at Lambeau. Randall Cobb could be sidelined again due to a hamstring injury, but Devontae Adams continues to have a clutch year. He's among the top five in the league for receiving touchdowns and receptions this year. That being said, both Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs are cleared to play again, both offensive powerhouses for the Vikings. We got to play a great game. You know, they're a fantastic defense. They got weapons on offense, and we're going to have to score, uh, you know, score 30 and, uh, and be efficient. I, I look at it as a must win at this point. We, we don't really have any other games to, to spare. Um, you know, they, they are a great team, so we, we definitely got to bring it when we get out there. Um, just not, not take it lightly at this point. It's, uh, it's pretty much do or die. Kickoff between the Packers and the Vikes is at 720 tonight. 641 this morning, a record number of travelers will be hitting the roadways and airways returning home from Thanksgiving today. And you may want to watch the weather if you're doing so. A winter storm is expected to hit parts of our viewing area. Chris is tracking it all next in his first alert forecast. And local businesses are hoping small business Saturday sales this weekend will translate into larger crowds all holiday season long. Why Monroe Street businesses in particular had an extra reason to celebrate when News 3 This Morning Sunday continues. This morning, we are tracking what could be a major winter storm across parts of the Midwest today, especially south and east of Madison. Here at News 3, we have declared an alert day in advance of this storm moving in, and that's where several inches of snowfall accumulation 
are likely. Let's go ahead and show you where the storm is right now. Overnight, it began to get its bearings together over parts of Nebraska, and here it is right now. In the last hours, you can really see those bands of intense snow beginning to develop across parts of southeastern Nebraska and southwestern Iowa there. That system will gradually work its way towards the west as we're towards the east, rather, as we go through the morning. And as it does so, it'll likely unleash blizzard conditions for a lot of folks. And I know a lot of us will be traveling back through the Midwest today. Be advised, you could run into whiteout conditions at times, especially through parts of northern Missouri and southern Iowa today. Northern Illinois likely will see blizzard conditions as well. Right now, they are just under a winter storm warning, not a blizzard warning as of now, though that has been considered by the National Weather Service to upgrade. They're just waiting for a little bit more confidence in our forecast data simply because we do still have a split there. Here in town, Madison, not under any kind of warnings or advisories, but Janesville and Beloit under winter storm warnings. Go over towards Greene County. All of you guys, New Glarus, Monroe are also under a winter storm warning for what could be several inches of snowfall accumulation through the day. We're starting out in the 30s right now with lots of cloud cover. Winds are out of the north and northwest at seven miles per hour and you see those warmer temperatures towards the south and east. Janesville at 37 and you get over towards the lake shore. You're at 38 and closer towards 40. That is what's going to help provide some of the moisture and the forcing needed to get those bands of snow later on today, but colder towards the north. That is where things will be dry. Let's go ahead and take you through the afternoon. You see the snow starting in the south, gradually moving its way towards the north, but the heaviest staying over the south and eastern parts of the state before that ends overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. That model a little farther north and it gives Madison a little bit of snow, but even still I've been watching the trends and they are trending even farther to the south at times. Right now a trace to an inch in the Madison area, one to three inches farther south and then six to 12 inches as you can approach the border. But check out Northern Illinois will really get hit hard by this and so travel delays will be a major problem as we go through the day. This afternoon again topping out at 33 we might see some light flurries. Again, it's an alert day here in town. The heaviest snow to the south and east. Then we get cold after that with more chances for snow occurring Thursday and Friday. Josh. All right, lots to watch, Chris. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, local businesses are hoping Small Business Saturday sales this weekend will translate into larger crowds through the holidays. Businesses on Monroe Street had an extra reason to celebrate. This was their first major event since that nine-month-long construction project. Cars and shoppers returned to the street Saturday as part of the national push to support small businesses on the first Saturday after Black Friday. A Dodgeville-based company or clothing company is hoping a celebrity shout-out will help sell some coats this holiday season. A Lands End down coat made Oprah's Favorite Things gift list this year. Oprah calls it the coat of the season. This is the third year Lands End has made Oprah's list. A women's flannel shirt and a down-filled top coat have been recognized the last couple years. 6.48 this morning, the holiday season is also oftentimes the car buying season as dealerships try to clear their lots in order to make room for a new crop of models. Mark Kane will head behind the wheel with Harvey Briggs to check out the newest Volvo, telling us whether or not you should add it to your Christmas list. Thanks for watching News 3 This Morning Sunday.
It's 33 degrees and cloudy in Madison right now. We do have winds coming out of the north and northwest at seven miles per hour, but we are all watching the winter storm that will impact southeastern parts of the state today. Again, this snow will be mainly south and east of Madison. I think we'll be lucky to even see a flake here in town today, but where that snow falls, several inches of snow will certainly be likely. Here's future track, which I think is just a tad far north on the snow shield, but it does show show the snow beginning around 1230 for folks around Monroe and Janesville, but then that just continues through the afternoon and evening before it be finally begins to push out of the area as we head into the overnight hours and into your Monday. Again, those heaviest snow totals will be to our south and east as you get towards Kenosha, six to 12 inches is certainly possible. Three to eight inches in Janesville and one to three inches just to the north and west of that. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. 6.52 this morning, the Swedish car company Volvo is on a roll introducing new cars and SUVs at a rapid clip. The latest model in the lineup to hit showrooms is the 2019 XC40 compact luxury crossover. Our Mark Kane goes behind the wheel with Harvey Briggs to check it out. You know, somebody left the Volvo in the dryer too long. It shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, honey, I shrunk the <laughs> Volvo. <laughs> They may have shrunk the Volvo, but it doesn't make it any less Volvo-y. This is the XC40. It's their compact crossover, and it really is, um, you know, their entry-level product now. But there's no mistaking. It's a Volvo. Oh, yeah. No, you've got everything that Volvo has done recently with their grill, the Thor's hammer headlights. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the XC40 is a little un volvo -y. But this one is designed to be a little more youthful, a little more sporting, thus the pumpkin spice. I mean, lava interior. Lava. Yes, our test car has an orange interior. It's the mid-trim level, our design. The base model's called subscription. The high end is inscription. But it's the R design which steps up the fun factor. And let's not forget, it's a Volvo. It's really well uh, put together. The all-wheel drive system is nice. The design is classic Scandinavian, understated, simple. What really makes Volvo good right now is the engineering, the platforms, the engine, and the general interior design and feel. I mean, all those things are really good in Volvo. But not everything is Volvo good. Every new Volvo is equipped with the company's Census Connect a nine inch center screen that controls just about everything. Now this would be fine in your living room. Yeah, I, you know, tablets are a great device for sitting on the sofa and reading or surfing the web or that stuff. I have real issues with them when you're driving. So let's fire it up and take a look at it. Yeah, All right, let's take a look at it. It's, <laughs> take a look at it as it warms we're, up. We're still loading. We are loading. And we're still loading. <laughs> still loading. And there comes the radio. There's and now phone. my phone it found. And now let's see if the navigation loads up. This is one of the issues with it. It does take a while. Volvo says, don't use this when you're driving. They say, use the voice commands or the steering wheel. And that's fine, but it takes a while to learn to do this. Can you change the temperature? Uh, the temperature, I can, let's, let's see if we can do that. Lower temperature to 68 degrees. Temperature set to 69 degrees. Well, close. Close enough. She's one off. <laughs> But what isn't off is the practicality of this little crossover. It's easy to get in and out of because it sits a little higher. And when you come back here, you also have quite a bit of storage behind that mm -hmm. rear seat. So And those seats go down, obviously. Those seats go down, so you've oh, got... It's a, it's a nice low lift here. Yeah, you've got a nice low, easy lift height, and you've got a little hidden compartment underneath <laughs> here. You know, it's one of those cars that you, you drive and you don't go, wow, I love the performance, it blows me away. No, that's not what this is about. This is really just about a comfortable, safe, stylish, and, um, you know, interesting car. 6.56 is your time, and there's a full hour of real news ahead here on News 3 this morning Sunday. Next, a warning for shoppers buying gifts online this holiday season. But first, here's a preview of what's to come this morning on an all-new For the Record. Good morning, everybody. I'm Neil Heinen. Today on For the Record, we will revisit Madison as it was in the 1960s. 
a decade that for many shaped a view of Madison that remains prevalent, if not relevant, to this day. Regardless of your perspective or opinion of that period of time, it is a compelling story and essential to understanding how we became the Madison of 2018. Madison historian Stuart Levitan has written an exceptional book on Madison in the 60s, and he and I will discuss the book and the times, and that's coming up this morning at 10.30 on WISC. It's a celebration centuries in the making. We'll introduce you to a southwestern Wisconsin family marking a major milestone times five. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday. Good morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning Sunday. It is November 25th, just after 7 o'clock right now. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese is tracking snow in just a moment, but first, breaking overnight from the Diocese of Madison. Bishop Robert Morlino has died. He passed away around 915 last night at St. Mary's Hospital shortly after suffering a cardiac arrest. This is according to a post from the Diocese of Madison's Facebook page. A previous post said the bishop suffered a cardiac event during a routine doctor's appointment Wednesday. He was initially expected to be okay, but his condition worsened. Funeral plans will be announced at a later time. Morlino was 71 years old. If you're planning on ordering gifts online this Cyber Monday, Madison police are reminding you about porch pirates this time of year. They're encouraging you to get your packages sent to your workplace instead of your home. There are also options to schedule deliveries for a time you know you'll be at home or require a signature. 81 million Americans shopped online last Cyber Monday and nearly a third of Americans say they've had a package stolen from their front door. 
The Packers are back on the field tonight for the first time in more than a week, playing in prime time against the Vikings. The Packers are still looking for their first win on the road this season. The last time these rivals met up in September, they tied at Lambeau. Randall Cobb could be sidelined again due to a hamstring injury, but Devontae Adams continues to have a clutch year. He's among the top five in the league for receiving touchdowns and receptions this year. Kickoff is set for 7:20 tonight. Well, this is one of the busiest weekends out on the roads, and once all of the numbers come in, holiday travel is expected to be up more than 5% compared to last year. Today is expected to be the official busiest travel day of the year, and weather is going to complicate things for drivers passing through southeast Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois. United will operate a record 679 flights out of Chicago today. That's enough to fly 71,000 people home. As many as 3 million flyers could pass through TSA checkpoints, which would also be a record. Lots of eyes on that forecast, Chris. What's the very latest? That's right, Josh. Right now we are still watching winter storm warnings that are in effect mainly across extreme southeastern Wisconsin, Monroe, Janesville. You guys are under that winter storm warning. You work your way over towards Waukesha and Milwaukee. You are also under the winter storm warning. But back to the north and west of that, well, Things are all clear and we'll be hard pressed to get a flake of snow there, but all throughout parts of northern Illinois, eastern Iowa and even southern Iowa. We have winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings as whiteout conditions will certainly be possible. We're watching the snow form over parts of Iowa right now and through Nebraska and over the past couple of hours, we have really watched the very intense heavy bands of snow develop right along and south of I 80 through parts of Nebraska and that's going to be impacting parts of Kansas City as we go through the morning as well. But right here in Madison right now, we do have a lot of cloud cover out there. Temperatures are right around 32 degrees. We have dropped a degree as we've gone through the past couple of minutes and winds stay out of the north at eight miles per hour. We will watch to see if we can get any flakes of snow here today. It's possible in the afternoon, but again, not really all that likely. So this morning we will go from 32 to 33 degrees, keeping those winds out of the north anywhere from about 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then by the afternoon, we should top out right around 33 degrees. First alert traffic for anyone who is headed out this morning. Here's a live look down to well, the camera just went down on us there, but it, the roads are moving smoothly right now. So far, no issues on them at all. In fact, there are no issues across the city of Madison as of now. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. Ahead of that potential snow, a snow emergency is in effect for the city of Beloit. This means all cars must be removed from city streets by 11 o'clock this morning and stay off until at least 11 tomorrow morning. If you're wondering where to park during that time, there's a list of parking areas on the city of Beloit's website. We have a link to that on channel3000.com. As always, if your plans depend on the weather, make sure to get our Channel 3000 First Alert weather and traffic app. There you will find updated and accurate information. There's a community meeting this week about a construction project that will cause some issues for drivers on the Isthmus next year. Crews are going to be resurfacing and replacing the stretch of North Bassett Street from West Dayton Street to West Wilson Street over the summer. That area is from the UW campus to the railroad tracks near John Nolan Drive. The city says a history of water main breaks have made the project a priority. MG&E will also be doing duct work during that time. If you live in the area, there's a public involvement meeting about goals and objectives for the project tomorrow night at the Madison Senior Center. It starts at 7 o'clock. There's also a meeting at the same location next Monday as well. Madison leaders are looking at shifting around funds to make sure they can pay for upgrades at a popular downtown dog park. We're talking about improvements at Birdingham Dog Park on the corner of John Nolan and Broome. The city is looking at installing artificial turf in that dog area, among other things. The total contract came out to about $508,000, so the Finance Committee will be looking at moving money that wasn't spent in other budgets this year to go towards that project. The committee meets tomorrow night. 7.06 this morning, a family in southwest Wisconsin is marking a big milestone times five. It's a celebration the rest of us can only hope to make it to, and many of us won't even have the opportunity. Only News 3's Leah Lynchide traveled back to her hometown of Highland to bring us a story half a century or more in the making. Inside this small town is where a big love story begins. Oh, that was a very cold day in November. 
Highland happens to be home to the Beckus family. This is our wedding picture. Arnie and Ruth. 1959, November 14th. But to hear their first chapter, we met in Madison for a celebratory lunch of sorts. It will be soon be 59 years in three weeks. Married nearly six decades, they're celebrating a milestone a little early. What was good about being married 59 years? Well, it's better than not being married 59 years, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no. Uh, but this isn't the only Beckus couple <laughs> counting their blessings. Well, let's see. 50 what? 57 years. Arnie's brother, Verge, and wife, oh, Lana, 57 in December, December, yeah. have their own story to celebrate. Here's a wedding picture. Both marriages are well over that half-century mark, and this fairy tale family romance is nowhere near the end. <laughs> There are a couple more characters we should introduce you to. 52 years. We've been married 56 years. August? In August. Uh, <laughs> June 18th, 50 years. And 66. I better get this one. That's Everett and Janet, Delbert and Joan, and Norman and Yvonne. All five brothers married to their significant others. Great, great. For 50 years or more. Couldn't have been any better. <laughs> I think it's been wonderful. I can't imagine that we did this. I think we're really lucky to end up with five women that have a lot of patience like that. You might wonder where these boys got the resolve to write their stories half a century long each. I think a lot was an upbringing, too. They attribute it to their hometown and the century-old farm they grew up on. You had to do a lot of work. <laughs> work ethic. I think that really helped us uh, be growing up on the farm, to learn how to work and give and take a little bit. <laughs> it's not often these days you'll find five couples 50 years in love. Oh, there's a handsome boy. Is he still handsome? Well, some days. And for the rest of us, hoping to have our own happily ever afters, there's a lesson to be learned from these couples, still working on the ending to theirs. Oh, you know, work it out, it takes a lot of work. Yeah. I think it's trust and respect. And I think you gotta wanna do it. Yeah. It's easy to say, slam the door and leave, I think, nowadays. Love and respect each other. And that's right. That's the thing. And it doesn't always go the way you want it, but you got to give in sometimes and help each other out one way or the other. In Highland, I'm Leah Lynchide for WISC News 3. Lots of good advice there. Congrats to them. 709 this morning, the Ally Drive neighborhood is getting a big gift this holiday season, something they've needed for years, a grocery store. In just about a month, owner Mary Maldonado says the doors of Luna's Groceries will be open. She's putting the finishing touches on the now bright orange and green building on Red Arrow Trail. The Ally Drive neighborhood hasn't had a grocery store since 2009 when Cub Foods closed. The Walgreens tried to fill the need but closed a couple years ago. So a couple years ago when the Walgreens closed, um, I put forward uh, funding from the city to be able to help pr uh, provide access to um, taxis and, and bus fare so that people would be able to get access to food. But obviously that was never enough. This store is years in the making for the city, giving $157,000 to Luna's from the Healthy Retail Access Program. It's the largest amount given from that program. There's a chance for you to do something good this holiday season to support a Marquette County food pantry. Students in the Westfield School District have made an array of ceramic bowls for the 22nd annual Bowls for Hunger fundraiser. They're inviting community members to come into the high school art room and help design and hand paint them. That's from 345 to 530 Monday and Tuesday. Monday, December 10th is the actual fundraiser where people will buy those bowls filled with warm soup. All proceeds from the meal and raffle go to the Marquette County Food Pantry. 7-11 this morning and all eyes are to the south of us right now as we wait for an incoming winter storm. Here's a live look outside at the Capitol. Chris will let us know who's under the gun and what we need to plan for. The news is back on News 3 this morning Sunday.
We do have an alert day for today and tonight as head of a winter storm that is moving into the area that will likely affect areas mainly south and east of Madison. That's where several inches of snow will certainly be likely. We're watching this storm already as it gains strength across parts of the plains and Midwest. We have watched the bands of snow intensify over parts of southeastern Nebraska this morning. Now the slow is a essentially getting ready to track towards northern Indiana as we go through the rest of tonight. That's going to bring snow to parts of northern Illinois and southeastern Wisconsin as it does so. Here are the winter weather bulletins across much of the country. Everything in orange, that is a blizzard warning that you see from western Kansas all the way through parts of southern Iowa and even northern Missouri. Those blizzard warnings do not extend into northern Illinois at this time. However, that is being considered by the National Weather Service. And I'll tell you what, the last time a blizzard warning was issued for this part of the country at all was nearly four years ago. So that tells you that this is a rare kind of storm moving into the area that will pose some major travel difficulties if you are traveling through the areas that the storm will hit later on today. We do have some winter storm warnings south of Madison along with the winter weather advisory for Jefferson County and then more winter storm warnings as you approach Milwaukee. So keep that in mind for later on tonight if you are traveling here within the area that you might face some issues over there. But if you're leaving right now, know that conditions are fine. The temperature is 32 degrees, but we are mainly cloudy. There is no rain or snow falling out of the area. Temperatures are even a little bit warmer and above freezing as you travel towards the south and east. 37 in Janesville, 38 as you work your way over towards Kenosha right now. But here's how things will play out. As we enter into the lunchtime hours, we might see some snow across the southern counties, but then throughout the afternoon, that snow gradually works its way towards the north and east and then stays there through the overnight hours before coming to an end early on Monday morning. And when all is said and done, south and east of Madison, one to three inches is possible, three to eight inches through Janesville, and then six to 12 inches as you get through northern Illinois and parts of southeastern Wisconsin. And here's the deal. I want to show you one of the snowfall models through western Illinois, spitting out 20 inches of snow. So again, whoever gets hit by this, it will be a big deal storm, all depending on that track. But major travel delays will be expected through that area. If you are leaving today, just drive very carefully. If you can wait till tomorrow, travel will get substantially better as we head into your Monday. We get cold after the snowstorm moves on through, perhaps a flurry early on Monday. Temperatures struggling through the 20s Tuesday and Wednesday. By Thursday and Friday, we get a little bit warmer, but that warm front will bring the chance of snow back into the area. All right, lots to look at. Yes, sir. We will be tracking it all in the News 3 Weather Center. All right, Chris, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us. It's with us rather and check out this photo Wendy sent us. This is from James Madison Park. We've seen a lot of images like that with the wind and the colder temperatures. A beautiful shot there, Wendy. Thank you so much for sharing. So what does your morning look like? Take a picture and post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page, Twitter or Instagram and use the hashtag MyNews3Morning and that's how we're able to pick out our favorites and air them right here on the program. 717 this morning, a college student is suffering from a strange virus believed to be contracted from her dorm room. And we don't need turkey stuffing pie and a giant Pikachu balloon to be thankful every day. How that mindset could make you healthier when News 3 This Morning Sunday continues.
Lots of cloud cover in Madison right now. 32 degrees is the temperature as you are heading out. We don't have any kind of rain or snow falling over the area right now, but as we go through the afternoon, we could see that developing from the south and gradually working its way towards the north. And so south and east of Madison, several inches of snowfall is likely. And of course, a lot of folks are going to be traveling. So we have made today an alert day out ahead of that. In fact, here's how things may play out into the afternoon and evening by one o'clock. Places like Janesville and Monroe getting in on some heavy snow during that time. The southern tier of Dane County might get in on some of that as we go through the afternoon and evening. Eventually that snow works its way on out of here as we get into the overnight hours and into early in the morning on Monday when all is said and done only about a trace to an inch if we see a flake of snow at all in the Madison area. But as you work your way towards the south and east, those snow accumulations will gradually increase, especially closer towards the Illinois state line. Josh. Thanks, Chris. 722 this morning. A lot of us reflect this time of year on the things we're grateful for, and some area mental health experts say we shouldn't reserve that for just the holidays. UW-Madison counselor Bob McGrath says research shows that gratitude is strongly correlated with happiness and overall well-being. Overall well he says it can even help people start exercising and get better sleep. While Thanksgiving is a good reminder, McGrath hopes that gratitude goes beyond one day or one season. We sometimes have an inclination to focus on what's wrong instead of what's right. And so it really helps change that perspective to there's good things in my life. McGrath suggests keeping a gratitude journal where you can jot down a few things you're grateful for every night and carry that on to everyday life. A new grant in Rock County will help people needing long-term suicide prevention care. The Janesville Gazette reports the county's Human Services Department is one of 15 agencies receiving $20,000 from the state to help enhance mental health crisis intervention services. Rock County will use it to train 100 employees in collaborative and assessment and suicide management. The goal is to help keep people who have, have become high risk of high of suicide out of the hospital and focused on their mental health at home. That training will be completed later this month. If you or someone you know needs help talking about mental health related topics, we have a number of resources up on our Time for Kids Time to Talk page on our website. There you'll also find a new BU effort focused on kids being confident in who they are. You can check it all out at channel3000.com slash time for kids. A college student already suffering from Crohn's disease and a weakened immune system has now contracted adenovirus. Her father says several weeks into the fall semester, she complained of respiratory issues and visited the campus health center. Now he believes mold in her dorm room could have made her even more sick. Here's Jerika Duncan. You can't sleep at night because the pillow is right next to mold and you're up all night coughing. University of Maryland freshman Jessica Thompson says she discovered mold on her shoes and clothes in her dorm room back in August. She believes the fungus eventually made her sick. We got to go home on the weekends and we would be totally fine at home and we would come back and would be sniffling and um, coughing and then have headaches. Thompson says she repeatedly alerted the issue to university officials who eventually moved her and more than 500 other students to temporary housing while the school worked to clean the dorms. They had put in a dehumidifier and the heat had finally turned on. The mold seemed to go away, but it was a good two and a half months. Freshman Olivia Paragall died on Sunday after contracting adenovirus. Ian Paragall is her father. He says her room also had mold. It didn't help the illness. I think that's a really fair statement. We don't know that there's causation yet, but it didn't help things. The University of Maryland says it learned of the first case of adenovirus on November 1st. This past Tuesday, the school announced there were a total of six cases, including Olivia's. I want the, the other kids to make sure they don't get sick. I mean, apparently there were two kids sick when, when we came forward, right? That was the 13th. I would have liked to have had that information. And now there's three more kids sick. While we want to acknowledge that there are cases on campus, we don't necessarily want to stir up unnecessary angst. Dr. David McBride is head of the Campus Health Center. What we've done is we've stepped up our cleaning efforts. We're on high alert here, and we're working to be very diligent in following up on cases when students are sick to make sure that they don't worsen. One third of U.S. parents plan to skip out on getting the flu shots for their kids this season. That's according to a new study this week by a children's hospital in Michigan. In the poll, the top three reasons parents cited for not getting their children vaccinated. 
They were concerned about side effects. It doesn't work very well, and their currently healthy child does not need to be vaccinated. But medical experts disagree, citing these statistics. In Wisconsin, 379 people died last season from flu-related symptoms, including three children. Health officials say more than 7,500 were hospitalized. Right now, doctors say it's still too early to tell what this flu season will be like. Still ahead this morning, a check of today's top stories, including a preview of tonight's big Packers game. Plus, more on that breaking news we have been following overnight from the Diocese of Madison. Bishop Robert Morlino has died. How worshipers have been honoring him when News 3 This Morning Sunday returns in a moment. Climate change concerns are growing across the country this weekend. How a new alarming report shows the devastating effects of what researchers call man-made climate change. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday. Good morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning Sunday, 7.30 on this November 25th. I'm Josh Breider. Meteorologist Chris Reese is tracking the latest on the incoming winter storm, but first, ahead of the potential snow, a snow emergency is in effect for the city of Beloit. This means all cars must be removed from city streets by 11 o'clock this morning and stay off until at least 11 tomorrow morning. If you're wondering where to park during that time, there's a list of parking areas on the city of Beloit's website. Anyone impacted by the summer's historic flooding can register for relief through FEMA until December 17th. That agency has already come through and assessed overall damage, but the process was just to qualify certain counties for assistance. Homeowners and businesses still need to register to be considered. You can do that online at disasterassistance.gov or over the phone. You can see the number there on your screen. 
If your weekend plans include heading to the farm to cut down your Christmas tree, the state's Farm Bureau is asking you to stay in state. Wisconsin is home to a $16 million Christmas tree industry. There are more than 365 Christmas tree farms across the state. Along with adding that seasonal smell to your home, those trees are often recycled into mulch after the holidays. We are ranked fifth in the country when it comes to the number of trees, cut, and tree acreage. The Packers are back on the field tonight for the first time in more than a week. They'll be playing in prime time against the Vikings. The Packers are still looking for their first win on the road this season. The last time these rivals met up, they tied at Lambeau. That was back in September. Randall Cobb could be sidelined again due to a hamstring injury, but Devontae Adams continues to have a clutch year. He's among the top five in the league for receiving touchdowns and receptions. Kickoff is at 720. A lot of eyes on that forecast, Chris, and it looks like there's going to be a really fine line on who's going to get the snow. There really will be a fine line on who gets it and who doesn't. But here's the storm right now, and the region of low pressure is tracking right across Kansas City as we speak. And then that will eventually kind of dive towards the south a little bit and then curl back to the north. But here's the snow shield on the northwest side of that. You see heavy snow starting to develop through parts of southwestern Iowa, through southeastern Nebraska and into northern Kansas as we speak. A lot of those same areas under blizzard warnings right now. We do still have winter storm warnings as you work your way into northern Illinois and extreme southern Wisconsin, mainly south of Madison. This is going to be in place Places like New Glarus, Monroe, over towards Janesville, throughout Walworth County, through Waukesha, Milwaukee, and Kenosha. Those are the areas that could really pick up on some high snowfall totals as this works its way on through. Some of the latest data trending just a little bit slower with the arrival of this. We'll keep a close eye on that, but here's the latest future track bringing in that first flake of snow towards the south around 130 and gradually coming towards the north. And so it doesn't bring any snow into our area until after sunset tonight. We'll watch that as that does mean perhaps a bigger impact on the Monday morning commute for areas to our south and east as the snow does not move out now until about 11 o'clock on Monday. Again, we're watching that one very closely. Temperatures behind it will, of course, be very cold. Traffic right now as you are headed out, this is the belt line at Todd Drive. It is running smoothly this morning. So far, no issues. We are hoping that we can continue that story as we go through your Sunday, but of course, and to the evening, we could see issues later on down south. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. Breaking news from the Diocese of Madison overnight. Bishop Robert Morlino has died. He passed away around 915 last night at St. Mary's Hospital shortly after suffering a cardiac arrest. This is according to a post from the Diocese of Madison's Facebook page. A previous post said the bishop suffered a cardiac event during a routine doctor's appointment Wednesday. He was initially expected to be okay, but his condition worsened. Funeral plans will be announced at a later time. Morlino was 71 years old. An all-night prayer vigil is being held right now at Holy Names Heights on High Point Road. The vigil will end when Mass begins at 8 o'clock this morning. The public is invited to attend. We're waiting to see whether or not there will be a government shutdown. This after some comments made by the president this week that he could force a government shutdown if Congress doesn't fund his wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. <coughs> He tweeted, Republicans and Democrats must come together, finally, with a major border security package, which will include funding for the wall. A White House official said the president approved a memo from Chief of Staff John Kelly instructing the Department of Defense to allow use of force, including lethal force, where necessary, even though it's illegal for the military to act as law enforcement. The president says the wall and military are needed to stop the caravan of migrants from entering the U.S. You know, you're dealing with a minimum of 500 serious criminals. So I'm not going to let the military be taken advantage of. Defense Secretary James Mattis characterized the memo as a request, not an order. He says most of the nearly 6,000 active duty, duty soldiers along the border will be unarmed. The fallout continues after an alarming new government report shows climate change will have a devastating impact on the economy. But the findings are at odds with President Trump's policies. Hillary Lane reports. Scientists are warning of grave consequences if the U.S. does not take immediate action to curb climate change. It's such a wake-up call. Brenda Eckwurzel is a co-author of the new report compiled by 13 different government departments and agencies. 
which found climate change is already causing more frequent and severe storms, droughts, floods, and wildfires. The report says extreme weather in the U.S. in the past three years has cost nearly $400 billion. Scientists say by the end of the century, the U.S. could be up to 12 degrees warmer. The scale of emission reductions that we're doing in the United States is not enough to really slow the pace of climate change, especially a lot of people around the world, a lot of nations look to us for leadership. Great climate, we're going to have that, and we're going to have forests that are very safe. But President Trump has been criticized for rolling back Obama-era environmental and climate regulations. He also withdrew the U.S. from the 2015 Paris Agreement that involved nearly 200 countries. In a statement, the White House criticized the new report, saying it is largely based on the most extreme scenario, which contradicts long-established trends. Any leader who does not take climate change seriously is doing a disservice to the public. The new research says if steps aren't taken, climate change will increase the risk of disease, decrease crop production, and limit the availability of drinking water. Hillary Lane, CBS News, New York. The report was originally supposed to be revealed next week, but the Trump administration decided to put it out on Black Friday, one of the busiest shopping days of the year. 737 right now, if you're looking to stay fit this holiday season, it can be a tough challenge this time of the year. Next, the local opportunities offered here in Madison to help you do just that. News 3 This Morning Sunday will return in a moment. Thirty-two degrees, the temperature right now. We do still have a lot of cloud cover in the Madison area, but as we go through the day, that cloud cover is going to keep the temperatures 
fairly steady. We may warm up to about 33 degrees by lunchtime. We'll be mostly cloudy. A lot of that snow will be developing to our south at that point. Into the afternoon, we'll see those highs right around 33 as well. Winds out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And there's a possibility that we may see some light snow beginning to develop later on in the afternoon and closer towards the evening. But we do still have an alert day for southeastern Wisconsin tonight. That's where several inches of snow are likely when we get to the main weather segment. I'll break down the travel impacts and the timing. Thanks, Chris. If you're like me and you're still recovering from your Thanksgiving feast and need some motivation to hit the gym, a group fitness class could be the motivation you need. Tomorrow is the start of the Madison School and Community Recreations Fit for the Holidays program. They're offering 80 different class options, including yoga, aqua aerobics, cardio, boxing, and high intensity interval training. Those classes are available at MSCR's Odana East and Hoyt locations from now all the way up into uh, up until December 20th, just in time for the Christmas smorgasbord. You can get a four week unlimited class pass for 40 bucks. Emotional is a good word to describe Mike LaCrone's last Badger home game, but make no mistake about it. The Badger legend went out in style Saturday at Camp Randall. Here's our Adam Duxter. Well, I'd like to say it was business as usual, and that's what I asked the band that we do, but I don't think it has been. For Mike LaCrone, the final season down to the final game. That's that's very difficult for me to, to put into words how emotional I'm going to feel. To cap off a career that spanned five decades. I don't ever think I s stopped and thought, how much longer am I going to do this? I think it just it just kept happening, and I just kept enjoying the, the opportunities, and I, I didn't... I would never have foreseen that I would have been here this long. I never got bored with the job. I've never been bored one day. And uh, I don't know, I think I've been very fortunate, very lucky to be able to say that about a 50 year career that I, it's always been, always been that next thing that I was looking forward to. The Badger Band director has worked with thousands of students, but today it was his turn to be honored. With standing ovations and a custom jersey, the feeling, bittersweet. You get that exhilaration, but I can sense in the background that uh, the time is coming up fast, and I, I know that it's going to be a very difficult time for me to say goodbye because that's that's what it amounts to. And when the game was done, one last bit quarter and one last time to play varsity. I hope I can hold it together. <laughs> that's, literally the, that's literally the truth because I know that as we've approached this, there have been various moments that I've really felt uh, felt the, just the emotion of it. A special congrats to him. Now, just because this is LaCrone's last home football game doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of his career just yet. He still has a bowl game, basketball and hockey, and of course, the spring concert. Time right now is 744. Snow emergencies have already been issued for parts of our viewing area as a major snowstorm is headed our way. It comes on one of the busiest travel days of the year. Here's a live look over the Capitol. Chris is tracking the storm as well as a look ahead to your work week forecast when news through this morning Sunday continues. But first, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture on TV and celebrate with them right here on news three this morning.
And we continue to track the possibility of a winter storm moving into the area. But as you head out this morning, we don't have any snow falling at the moment. It is colder though compared to yesterday by a solid 10 degrees or so. We're at 32 degrees. Winds are coming out of the north at eight miles per hour, but there is moisture to the air. Our relative humidity is at 79%. Once you get to about 70%, you begin to consider the air saturated enough for precipitation to fall. We'll see how that transgresses as we go uh, through the day or transpires there. The temperatures across the state though are all in the 30s and 20s, 37 in Janesville right now, all the way to 29 in Black River Falls. We do have more cloud cover that's worked its way into the picture as well. And weather track trying to pick up on a little bit of snow falling to our south, but I think farther to the south, the air is just a little bit drier right now. We'll get more snow in those areas later on. So we have declared an alert day for today for several inches of snow that are likely south and east of Madison. Here's that snowstorm. We've been tracking it overnight. We're tracking it this morning as well. Heavy snow bands have developed across parts of southeastern Nebraska, and that system is essentially going to intensify as it curls up towards northern Illinois and northern Indiana as we head into the afternoon. Where that snow falls, we have blizzard warnings, winter storm warnings, along with winter weather advisories for several states, along with a lot of folks who are going to be traveling through this today. As we zoom this closer to home, we do see those winter storm warnings throughout pr practically all of northern Illinois. And then here in the Madison area, we don't have any types of advisories or warnings, but Monroe, Janesville, Waukesha, Milwaukee, all of you guys are under a winter storm warning for what could be several inches of snow. And here's how that'll play out. Here we are at 1230. The snow likely starting to gradually move in from the south at that point. It may come far enough north that Madison sees a few flakes, but I do think that for the most part we will be dry here in town today before that moves on off towards the south and east. A trace to an inch if we see any snow around here, but that heavier snow will be farther to the south and east. You could get upwards of a foot of snow as you get closer towards Kenosha later on. And here's one of the other models that's just a little bit farther to the north. It shows close to eight inches in Milwaukee, one inch in Madison, but then 20 inches in Moline. So again, where the snow tracks for a lot of folks, it will be a major deal that could pose some major travel delays as well if you are going to be driving today. But by tomorrow morning, that's the better time as travel conditions will certainly get much better. Temperatures will be in the 20s Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday will be dry warming up by Thursday and Friday. That's when we could actually see a warm front bring a little bit of snow into the area. That's something I'm still not used to saying a warm front brings some snow to the area. But if you're in Janesville, Bubba's waiting for the <laughs> snow and your pet walk there. So we'll just track the weather as we go through the afternoon. Yeah, and definitely for those folks traveling, mm -hmm. you want to keep an eye. Even a little bit of snow can be a problem on the roads. Yes, it can. All right, Chris, thank you. Be sure to stick with News 3 and Channel 3000 this weekend. There's no 530 news today, but on our news at 10, we'll have the latest conditions as this new moves into southern Wisconsin. But first, here at 8 o'clock, or 751 rather, the inspiring story of a blind broadcaster who's not letting anything get out of the way or in the way of his living his dreams. This is News 3 This Morning Sunday.
Welcome back at 754. Sam Fryman was born blind, but he's not letting what other people may see as a disability stop him from living his dream. Leslie Van Arstel has the inspiring story out of Philadelphia. Good to be with you again, buddy, and it's going to be a great game today. While he can't see the players score a goal, Matt Wallace, blind since birth, calls the games for Penn's women's ice hockey team. 3 nothing now, Lady Quakers. Yeah, great shift, keeping that in the zone. Sam Fryman paints the pictures, and Matt provides the color commentary. Their friendship began years ago at Temple University. They bonded over what else? Hockey. We always vaguely stayed in touch. Like, even after we graduated and went our separate ways, we'd always message each other, hey, how about the start of the hockey season? Sam continued his dream of calling games for various hockey teams around the country. And when he landed the job back in Philadelphia at Penn, he wanted Matt to be involved. And after a couple games, I just said to myself, you know what? I'm having fun doing this with Matt. Matt could help a lot. He adds a good little element of spark to the broadcast. Sam usually gives me really good lead-ins to when I can, you know, say something and also gives me very good cues as to when I just need to shut up because something's about to happen. And according to the coach, he's the team's secret weapon. I always write down my game thoughts in the middle of the game and happen to ask Matt what he thought we needed to do in between periods and verbatim every note that I had taken down Matt had listed off. It is tremendous to see how knowledgeable these guys are and how they are able to impact our program. Matt grew up listening to all four major Philadelphia sports teams. My first broadcaster that I really listened to and grew an appreciation for radio broadcasting was probably Harry Callis. And then Tim Saunders and Tom McGinnis. I mean, Philadelphia has been fortunate to have some of the best broadcasters in the sport, in their collective sports. But I lived around those teams. I just grew really close to the radio and just like connecting with the broadcasters. It became his passion and now he's living his dream. One game, one play, one call at a time. Just another show, story showing us nothing's impossible, right? I know. I love those Sunday stories. Dream it. It can happen. We are, of course, tracking the weather as we go through the day. An alert day for today with snow likely falling south and east of Madison. That's where folks could see upwards of six to eight inches of snow as you get over towards Janesville and Beloit and over towards Kenosha. So do be on the lookout for that. If you're traveling through northern Illinois or southern Iowa today, expect some major delays. But once the storm passes, we'll be cold but dry for a few days before snow chances Thursday and Friday. All right, Chris, thank you. And remember to download the channel. 3000 First Alert weather app and be the first to know the latest track on that incoming storm. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe.